In this week's video, I rank my top 10 tow vehicles for pop-up campers or lightweight trailers. Tow vehicles are changing and they are getting smaller and more fuel efficient. Join us in this brand new video from Golden K9 Campers. Hi everyone, my name is Daryl. So I'm the proud owner of an A-liner pop-up camper. I recently did a survey of A-liner owners to find out what kind of tow vehicle they used as well as the gas mileage that they got. After I reviewed the responses, I really thought it'd be a good idea to create a video on some fuel efficient vehicles for smaller pop-up campers. And so after a lot of research, this is my list. Now I based the list on price, fuel efficiency, as well as towing capability. So without further ado, let's get started. So number 10 on my list, and I gotta say it's my favorite, it's the RAV4 Prime and it's mine. I really love my RAV4 Prime, but unfortunately it only can tow 2,500 pounds. And so you, I don't think you could really call it a tow vehicle. I would only consider the RAV4 Prime as if you had a smaller pop-up camper that was fully loaded and it wasn't more than 2,000 pounds. But it gets great gas mileage. I get 38 miles per gallon on the freeway. And when I'm towing, I get anywhere between probably 23 and 26 miles per gallon, especially if it's flat. The other thing I really love about the Prime is it's got a 1500 watt inverter. And so we use it all the time. I actually don't get electrical hookups when I go camping because we basically just plug it into our Prime and it fully powers my A-liner pop-up camper. So I really love that capability and I love this vehicle, but if you have a little heavier pop-up camper, you're definitely gonna look somewhere else. So number nine on my list is the Hyundai Santa Cruz. And I really like the look of this vehicle by Hyundai. It looks really cool. Um, it has a 2.5 liter turbo engine and it gets really good horsepower. So it gets 281 horsepower and a really lot of torque, 300 pound feet of torque. It's got an eight speed dual clutch transmission with all wheel drive. Um, it has a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds and gets really good fuel mileage with 27 miles per gallon on the highway and uh, 20 in the city. The reason I didn't rate the Santa Cruz any higher is because it doesn't really have a tow package. They can install a tow hitch as well as a wiring harness. Um, the dealer said it'd be about $1,500 to install that. The other thing is, is I'm not sure the dual clutch transmission, uh, the DCT, is really all that great for towing. I don't think there's been very many tow vehicles with the DCT, and so I'm kind of concerned about that, as well as the turbo engine. So number eight on my list is the Honda Passport. It's very similar to the Honda Pilot. Um, it's got the tried and true 3.5 liter V6, as well as um, 285 horsepower and 262 pounds feet of torque and it's got the nine speed all wheel drive transmission. It has a good towing rating at 5,000 pounds and it gets 19 miles per gallon in the city and 24 miles per gallon on the highway. I would imagine the Passport's gonna be moved to the new um, platform that the pilot's on, but I think right now there's gonna be some pretty good bargains on the Passport and I've always kind of liked the Pilot and Passport. I think they're pretty attractive vehicles. So number seven on my list is the very attractive and popular Kia Telluride. So I gotta admit something, we were really, really close to buying a Kia Telluride because I just loved the way it looked and it had a towing package for it and it had a lot of space inside. What ended up winning us over on the RAV4 Prime was just, you know, it's great fuel efficiency. So it's got a good amount of horsepower and torque with its V6 engine. It's got an all wheel drive um, eight speed uh, automatic transmission. It has a 5,500 pound towing capacity. I think that's new for 2023. And it gets decent fuel mileage at 19 in the city and 25 in the highway. The towing package, it looks like was redone for 2023. And so they've got the self-leveling suspension, which is really great. And their tow package is, includes a tow mode that changes the gearing somewhat through the ECU uh, when it's towing. And it also has additional cooling uh, to keep the transmission cool. And so, yeah, there's a lot to like about the Kia Telluride. The only thing I don't really like about it is its price. 
So number six on my list is the Subaru Ascent. And this was another vehicle that we were looking really closely at. I really liked it. Um, it's got the Pepe 2.4 liter turbo engine and it has a CVT transmission. And so it's nice and torquey and it also gets really good fuel economy at 20 miles per gallon in the city and 26 on the highway. It's got that CVT transmission, which is kind of annoying, um, but like all Subarus or most of them, it's got all wheel drive and it has a towing capacity of 5,000 pounds, comes with a hitch and a seven pin wiring harness as well. My biggest concerns with the Subaru Ascent is that CVT transmission. I just have concerns about how well that will hold up as well as um, the turbo, but a lot of A-liner owners really love their Subaru machines. Um, they love the Subaru Outback with its CVT uh, transmission, so maybe it'll hold up a little bit better than what I will think. The only reason I didn't include the Subaru Outback is because a similarly, a similarly configured Outback with the turbo engine cost about $2,000 more. So number five on my list is the Jeep Grand Cherokee, and it's brand new on a new platform for 2022. The Jeep Grand Cherokee has a V6 with um, 293 horsepower and 257 pound-feet of torque. It's got all-wheel drive, but I configured the one I was looking at with rear-wheel drive um, for just over $40,000. It's got a towing capacity of 6,200 pounds and gets 19 miles per gallon in the city and 26 on the highway. The Jeep Grand Cherokee also has a plug-in hybrid variant called the 4xe, and it's a really nice option if you're gonna be using the Jeep Grand Cherokee kind of as a daily driver. It'll get you about 27 miles of electric only driving, but if you're primarily gonna be using it for towing, you're actually gonna get worse gas mileage towing on the freeway with than with the standard V6. Um, what's great about the Jeep Grand Cherokee though is it has a towing package which includes all the kind of necessities including a heavy duty alternator, additional cooling, um, the four pin and seven pin wiring harness, as well as a self-leveling suspension. And so it's hard to really go wrong with the Jeep Grand Cherokee. So number four on my list is the Ford Explorer. So Ford is following the formula that other tow vehicle manufacturers are doing, which is using a four cylinder turbo engine, which gives you really good fuel efficiency and lots of low end torque which makes for a relatively good tow vehicle. It's got 300 horsepower and 310 pound-feet of torque using its 2.3 liter four-cylinder engine. I configured it with rear-wheel drive to get the price down a little bit lower. It comes with a towing capacity of 6,200 pounds um, and gets 21 miles per gallon on the city and 28 miles per gallon on the highway, which is really, really good. Um, Ford does have a towing package for the Explorer. The Explorer should be a very capable tow vehicle. Number three on my list is the Dodge Durango. The Durango has always been a favorite for towing, mostly because it has the body on frame architecture as well as the rear wheel drive bias, which makes it a superb towing vehicle. It's got a V6 engine with 295 horsepower and 260 pound feet of torque and I configured it with rear wheel drive only, and it's got an eight speed automatic transmission. The Durango equipped with the towing package can tow 6,500 pounds and gets 19 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. So the Durango really has all you'd want in a towing package. So it's got the self-leveling rear suspension, it's got a brake controller, it has a heavy duty alternator, additional cooling, the hitch itself, as well as four pin and seven pin wiring harness. And so it's really hard to go wrong with the Dodge Durango. The other thing is, is it's based on an older platform. It's probably gonna be upgraded soon to match the Jeep Grand Cherokee, but right now you can get really great pricing on it. And so I configured one for just a little over $36,000. So number two on my list is the Ford Maverick. Introduced in 2022, the Maverick competes in the small pickup market against the Hyundai Santa Cruz. The Maverick uses a two liter turbo engine that makes 250 horsepower and 277 pound feet of torque through the 10 speed automatic transmission. It has a towing capacity of 4,000 pounds when equipped with the all wheel drive turbo 
and gets 22 miles per gallon in the city and 29 in the highway. The Maverick competes favorably against the Santa Cruz basically because of how it's equipped. So it automatically comes with the towing hitch. It comes with the four pin and seven pin wiring harness, as well as an integrated brake controller. And you can get it for a relatively cheap price. Um, I was able to configure one for $26,665. All in all, um, it's really a great deal with the fuel mileage that it gets. And there was a couple of A-liner owners that had the Ford Maverick and they all really loved them. So last but not least, and my number one two vehicle is the Ford Ranger. The Ford Ranger, it's not all that fancy with amenities, but what it makes up for in the loss of amenities is a relatively cheap and really a great tow vehicle. The Ford Ranger has a 2.3 liter four cylinder turbo engine making 270 horsepower and 310 pound feet of torque. I configured it with rear wheel drive on the 10 speed automatic transmission. The Ranger is rated to tow 7,500 pounds, which is really amazing for a $30,000 vehicle. Um, it gets 21 miles per gallon in the city and 26 miles per gallon on the highway. A number of A-liner owners reported their miles per gallon when towing on the Ranger and they are averaging 24 miles per gallon when towing. So it really doesn't take hardly any hit at all when you're towing with the Ford Ranger. You know, pretty much with all the turbos, I'm a little bit concerned about the heat, but Ford knows their vehicles. And um, I got to feel like they knew what they were doing with the Ranger as well as the Maverick and the Explorer. And so, yeah, I would look really seriously at that Ford Ranger. So there it is, my pick of the top tow vehicles for an A-liner or really any small camper or lightweight travel trailer. So if you're in the market for a tow vehicle, it's really hard to go wrong with any of these choices. As always, if you got value from this video, please consider liking it. When YouTube sees somebody like the video, it makes it a lot more likely that they're gonna send that content out to others. And so hopefully others can gain knowledge from this video as well. And also consider subscribing so you don't miss any of the content that I have coming up in the future. And I hope to see you again in the next one very soon. I've seen a lot of change, been through a lot of pain Some things are not the same as they were a year ago But all will be okay, I move on each and every day The past is where it stays, wait back again